Last year I made a video about the Motorola i355s. These are digital frequency hopping radios that came out of the USA during the 1990s and are illegal to use in the UK due to the frequencies they transmit on. However, today we'll be looking at another set of radios that use almost identical technology and are very difficult to monitor unless you're part of the system. They're impossible to listen to on a scanner, and best of all, they're legal to use in the UK. These are the DTR2430 and DTR2450 digital on-site two-way radios from Motorola. They use digital technology to provide really clear audio and features such as the ability to call individual radios with digital one-to-one -one calling. Users can also call defined groups of radios, as well as single DTR series radios within range. This is known as digital one-to-many calling. They're quite special in the fact that they use a technology standard known as frequency hopping spread spectrum. This is a method of transmitting radio signals by rapidly changing the carrier frequency among many separate frequencies occupying large portions of the spectrum. The changes are controlled by a code known to both transmitter and receiver, so they change to the same frequency at the same time. FHSS is useful for avoiding interference, preventing eavesdropping, and to enable code division multiple access communications. Frequency hopping spread spectrum offers three main advantages over conventional fixed frequency transmissions. Firstly, signals are highly resistant to narrowband interference because the signal hops to a different frequency. Secondly, signals are difficult to intercept if the frequency hopping pattern is not known, and jamming is also difficult as well. Certain types of radios select the same pseudo-random hopping sequence when transmit and receive are initiated, meaning the sequence changes with every transmission or every press of the PTT. And thirdly, transmissions can share a frequency band with many types of conventional transmissions with minimal mutual interference. This technology usually means the radios hop amongst 50 pseudo-random frequencies and have 10 hopping patterns or hop sets. These models operate in the 2.4 GHz band which makes them license exempt unlike the Motorola i355 and the very similar Motorola DTR550 which use the 900 MHz band. These radios were marketed as typically providing coverage comparable to or better than analog radios. Now this is quite a bold claim to make but would be believable to the end user upgrading from an analog system to DTR handhelds. They were sold as on-site radios so long range isn't needed and therefore would meet or exceed any analog two-way radios a hotel, construction site, school or hospital may use. They also support digital text messaging, software programming and meet US military 810C, D, E and F specifications. The 2430 and 2450 are almost identical despite one or two physical and technological differences. The main physical difference is the different coloured bezel around the screen. The 2450 incorporates enhanced features and functionality, providing the ability to monitor, manage and program a group's DTR2430 radios. Other differences include a higher capacity battery for up to 19 hours of operation per charge, as opposed to up to 14 and a half hours for the DTR2430, and charging takes one hour on the 2450, but three hours on the 2430. The 2450 has up to 50 public groups and 20 private groups, but up to 20 public groups and 10 private groups on the 2430. The 2450 also has increased messaging capacity, remote monitor, enable and disable of other radios, and over-the-air time and date update from other handsets. The radios are really rugged and well protected for all weathers and were tested with steady rainfall and wind for 30 minutes, 48 hours of salt fog exposure and 6 hours of blowing dust. They were also tested with up to 9 hours of exposure to vibration, 
18 shocks with a minimum g-force of 40 g each and multiple hours of exposure to storage temperatures as low as minus 55 degrees C and as high as 71 degrees C. The only issue I've seen with these radios is the rubber bezel on the front is easily damaged but I intend to fix mine with some black Sugru. There is also some white residue build up on the rubber coated surfaces after prolonged storage. This also happens on the Motorola i355s but it does wipe off easily. My only other niggle is the accessory connector cover on the bottom is easily breakable but otherwise they're a really solid radio and the things I've mentioned are mainly aesthetic. So on the front of the handsets themselves is a simple keypad with option keys, navigation keys, a home key, menu key and a power button. On the right side is an audio jack for optional earpieces and microphones and on the left side is the PTT switch and volume controls. The radios also have removable antennas. The back of the radio has a locking cover which reveals the battery. One major difference is that the Motorola i355s require a SIM card for non-cellular usage, i.e. the direct talk function. But the DTR series don't require SIM cards as they don't double up as mobile phones. The radios come with drop-in charger bases and detachable holsters and there was a number of peripherals made to suit various users. The most interesting is the mini keyboard which allows you to access options, update contacts and enter commands. And it can also be used for text messaging. Now in this video we can't range test for a couple of reasons. Firstly I could call all day from my local high spot and nobody would ever hear me let alone come back to me. Secondly, they have an output power of 100 milliwatts as their on-site radios for short-range comms at 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm not going to get very far. But I will be doing another video in due course testing with a friend of mine to see how far we can actually get. So that is a look at the Motorola DTR series of radios. Quite an amazing short-range radio system that is private and almost unmonitorable to the average Joe and certainly can't be monitored by any scanner. If you want to find out more about IDEN, Direct Talk and the Motorola i355 then I'll link the video at the end of this one. I'll also link you to a similar technology by a company called TriSquare.